With that, we're going to start in on the overall presentation. And the first place to start is with this concept of frame and focus. So we're starting really zoomed out in what is this bigger frame that makes sense in which to consider the higher potential of the engineering um, community to contribute to society. Remember our convening question was all around exploring this, this question of contribution to society. In order to do that, you have to zoom out from the engineering profession or engineering community itself and think about what is the bigger frame in which it uh, makes sense to consider this question of contribution. And so um, now I'm going to spend a few slides basically establishing this bigger context. To do that, we have to actually go back a little bit and look at um, the core of the definition of engineering or the role engineering plays in society. So this is a graphic from the Museum of Science in Boston. Um, it's, a, it's a massive simplification like any graphic like this, but I think one that's useful in sort of this is helping us establish our bigger frame. So at the center, you have this concept of societal needs. And societal needs help influence where scientists, so the oval here represents people, represents the community of scientists, where scientists go um, to, to uh, focus their work. And so science at its heart is, the op is about observation of the natural world or the social world in the case of social science. So scientists use the scientific method or methods uh, rooted in pure logic to make observation about the natural or social world or the physical world. They produce from that scientific knowledge. So the rectangles represent um, products. And so scientific knowledge is the accumulated wisdom that has been, um, that has been developed over, uh, over the years by scientists. And of course, that scientific knowledge has a direct uh, input to society. It helps shine a light on, on issues like climate change is happening, it's happening at this pace in these ways. That in itself, that knowledge is a direct value uh, to society. But if you come back down here to engineers, engineers play a similar but different role. For engineers, society basically expresses a need, and that need could come through a business demand, a government imperative, a great big challenge that society decides to rally behind. And the role of engineers basically is to help interpret and, and shape these societal needs, and then bring the accumulated body of, of wisdom from science and the technologies that have come before that have been based on this wisdom, and to use the engineering design process to basically meet the societal need by drawing on um, science and existing technology in order to create new technologies. Now we're using technology here in a very fundamental sense of the word. So not just the tech gadget that fits in your pocket, which a lot of people come to associate the world word technology with. Um, we're using this in the broad sense of the term as in technology equals the products and processes by way by which society adapts nature in order to meet its needs. So that's a very fundamental definition. And in this graphic would imply that all technologies are created by engineers. But one thing that, that makes the definition of engineering difficult is we know it's not just engineers who create technologies, but engineers are sort of the group most associated with the creation of technologies in that fundamental sense of the term. And it, another thing to point out is it's not just the invention of brand new technologies like artificial intelligence. It's also the application, the customization, the evolution of technologies um, that all fit in sort of this arrow to help meet societal needs. And of course, just to close the loop, new technologies also provide the tools for the next scientific exploration. So all of this kind of works um, in concert and is shown as kind of a bit of a system. But to reinforce this basic uh, kind of definition of technologies, I just want to look to one example for a moment. And it's, the, and it's an example of meeting a basic human need around mobility and how that's evolved uh, through the decades and centuries. So if you go back into uh, you know, the first industrial revolution in the 1700s and early 1800s came the steam engine as a way of kind of, um, as a leap forward, a technological leap forward in terms of human mobility. And so the, the first industrial revolution steam engine gave way to the second industrial revolution diesel or electric locomotives, right? And that's, you know, starting in sort of the late 1800s, early 1900s as the second industrial revolution was taking off. More recently, that gives away to high speed trains starting in about the 70s when the third industrial revolution was taking off. Of course, the third industrial revolution was driven by automation and IT and various pieces. So you start to get technology as much more the system of technology allowing for advances um, in locomotion and in meeting this basic need. And now many people are arguing that, uh, including the World Economic Forum, that we're entering a fourth industrial revolution, um, which has got some, um, like the previous ones, has some fundamental differences shaping up around the relationship of technology and society. And you have new, new ideas and new solutions to this problem of, local, uh, of uh, human locomotion, 
human uh, mobility coming up. This is, of course, the hyperloop that's being proposed um, by Elon Musk and, and other sort of leaders. And so what you actually see is, you know, the, the language around a lot of these technological leaps was actually quite similar at different times. You want me to give up my horse to get on that? That can't be safe. Are you crazy? What's that going to do to society? And, and then you hear the same thing in each generation as transformative new technologies come in. So what a lot of technology actually means in its more fundamental sense, the innovation that comes a lot of with it, is actually about weaving back in brand new cutting edge technologies back into very traditional settings. And that's a huge part of the function that engineers play. So we've spent quite a bit of time just now with these last few slides helping to establish science and technology as uh, the relationship between society and technology as the bigger frame in which it makes sense to consider the higher potential of the engineering community. And something that, that comes along with this frame is actually uh, a really exciting kind of uh, um, a recognition of, of importance and a real kind of excitement. I love this quote by this economist who talked about, we trust in nature, but we dream in technology. So technology has been something fundamental to human civilization since the very beginning. And you know, when you kind of, um, when we accept this as our frame as engineers, this relationship between technology and society, all of a sudden um, the general interest of the general public um, channels much more to what we're doing because everybody knows that this relationship between technology and society is, is critical to our future. 